ocho,张老师，我虽然睇唔到啫，但我可以行，可以听，可以呼吸，我真系好想感觉下出边嘅世界噶。我眼盲啫，我心冇盲到噶，有时我真系好寂寞噶。张老师，你明唔明啊？唉，青儿，我系好明白你嘅。张老师，我谂呢个世界上边除咗你，就冇其他人明白我噶啦。吓，真嘅？嗯，不如你讲啲嘢啲嘢俾我听啊。你真系想知？我怕吓亲你喎，我唔怕，你讲啦。其实我系一个天生好丑样嘅人嚟噶。哦，<笑>我又睇唔到，点会吓亲咧？唉、哎，你知嘛，盲人嘅感觉其实好敏锐噶。相处咗咁耐，我感觉到咧，你系一个心底好好，而且好可亲嘅人。再讲啦，我连自己嘅样系点都唔知，或者我用丑样过你好多咧。青儿啊，究竟有冇人赞过你？你好靓啫。冇啊！爹哋妈咪都唔带我出街嘅，就算有朋友嚟到，佢哋最多都系话我大个咗啊咁啦。嗯，从都冇提到我样嘅，我谂佢哋怕我自卑啩。<笑>其实个样啊，只不过外表啫嘛，有乜大不了啊？唔好讲呢啲啦，不如讲翻你啊。我，唉，我出世之后，我妈见我生得咁肉酸，受唔住刺激，于是就变咗痴痴呆呆咁。有一日佢煮饭。因为精神唔能够集中，所以导致火烛。啲假日邻舍救咗我，但系就救唔到我阿妈。我爸爸放工翻嚟，知道阿妈烧死咗，佢好伤心。佢将一切责任都推卸喺我身上边，仲话烧死嘅应该系我，而唔系我阿妈。后来佢就越觉得讨厌我，于是将我交咗俾阿叔，叫佢带我去孤儿院。咁嗰晚我爸爸失咗踪咯。于是父母就勤真好学，做咗教授。就系做佢哋嘅孝道，真系佢哋嘅福气啦。唉，但系你知唔知啊？每年我叔教嘅班收到嘅人数系最多，但系上堂嘅人咧就是、最少嘅。你知唔知点解啊？嗯嗯。因为我自己知道咧，自己嘅样生得好可怕，所以通常都唔点名嘅。有好多学生轮流嚟上堂，然后咧就大家交换笔记，有啲甚至宁可喺屋企咧用双倍时间嚟温习。但系咧，每逢到期考咧，佢通常都考得唔错嘅，知唔知点解？点解啊？因为佢哋啲考得唔好，肯要再收我，对多我个学期啊嘛。嗯，佢真系福中，真就福中不知福啦。青儿，你见唔到我，你当然系咁话啦。就算有遮日，我先话依得好啊，我都系咁话啫。
is an appeal from an order of the Honorable Walter Jones, Justice of the City Court, dated the ninth day of May, adjudicating the defendant in contempt of court for transferring a $5,000 mortgage during the pendency of a stay of execution and fining him $1,000, the full amount of the judgment herein, together with $10 cost of the motion, therefore. The action herein was brought by the plaintiff in the city court of the city of New York, county of New York, to recover the sum of $3,000 for personal injuries sustained by him as a result of the negligence of the defendant in the operation of his automobile. The defendant first appeared in the action by B.T. Downs, counsel for the Indemnity Insurance Company, defendants insure her. Upon the collapse of the Indemnity Company, William Fredericks was substituted as attorney for the defendant. During the course of the trial, attorney had made motions to dismiss the complaint at the end of the plaintiff's and at the end of the entire case, and upon the juries rendering a verdict in favor of the plaintiff in the sum of $1,000, a motion was made to set aside the jury's verdict and dismiss the complaint. The court reserved decision on all three motions and requested briefs in support thereof, which were furnished. A motion was thereafter made pursuant to Section 753 of the Judiciary Law to punish the defendant for contempt of court for transferring a $2,500 mortgage during the pendency of the stay of execution above mentioned in defiance of the court's mandate. Which motion was argued before the court? The motion was granted and an order signed on the 7th day of June adjudicating the defendant in contempt of court and fining him the full amount of the judgment together with $10 costs, which order is the subject of this appeal. The facts with reference to the $2,500 mortgage, the subject of the transfer, are as follows. The defendant herein was the heir to certain property under the will of his late wife, who died in December, among which was the $2,500 mortgage in question to parcels of land in Central Park, Long Island, and a life interest in certain property in Queens County. Except for the $2,500 mortgage, the remainder of the property remained intact. This is not disputed. This clearly refutes the contention of the plaintiff that the defendant denuded himself of all of his assets. It appears from the affidavit of Mr. Ritter, also the attorney for the estate, that an assignment of the mortgage was drawn from the estate to the defendant. It is not contended that notice of the estate was given to the defendant, nor does it appear anywhere. Thank you.
The transition from life to death cannot be mechanized if death is to be brought about quickly and without damage to the meat. What mechanical tools were tried out proved useless. They were either too complex or outright harmful. Most of them hampered satisfactory bleeding. Our habit of meat eating only after it has been cleared of all blood, lost, it is asserted, be traced back to Jewish precepts since both Greeks and Romans were anxious to keep the precious liquid in the carcass. They strangled the animals or pierced them with heated spears so as to prevent bleeding. Yet people would more likely abstain from meat than give up habits that have grown into instincts. Blood terrifies. Only the knife, guided by the human hand, can perform the transition from life to death in the desired manner. For this operation, craftsmen are needed who combine the precision and skill of a surgeon with the speed of a peace worker. It is established how far and how deep the throat of a hog should be pierced. A false stroke injures the meat product. And it must be done quickly, 500 hogs per hour. To sever the jugular vein, the sticker stays at the animal, suspended head downward by its forefoot, turns it properly, and pierces the throat about 6 inches. The same consummate skill and caution must be applied in butchering sheep. These less lively animals are hoisted to the rail in pairs. The stick is performed with a double-edged stiletto just behind the ear.
cows are no longer taken to pens by the carload to be killed with a pointed spear. When they were, the sticker squatted on boards, often placed crosswise over the pens, awaiting the moment when he could best thrust the spear between the eyes of his victim. Today, a four-pound hammer is used to smash in the skulls of the cattle in a narrow knocking pen. Once hit, the animals collapse like wooden blocks. It is then that the workmen fasten the chain around the hind legs and hoist them to the ring, head downward. At the same time, the sticker thrusts a knife into the throat of the unconscious animal. The blood is usually gathered in special containers. Killing itself then cannot be mechanized. It is upon organization that the burden falls. In one of the great packing plants, an average of two animals are killed every second, a daily quota of some 60,000 heads. The death cries of the animals whose jugular veins have been opened are confused with the rumbling of the great drum, the whirring of gears, and the shrilling sound of steam. Death cries and mechanical noises are almost impossible to disentangle. Neither can the eye quite take in what it sees. On one side of the sticker are the living. On the other side, the slaughtered. Each animal hangs head downwards at the same regular interval. Except that, from the creatures to his right, blood is spurting out of the neck wound in the tempo of the heartbeat. In 20 seconds on the average, the hog is supposed to have bled to death. It happens so quickly, and is so smooth a part of the production process, that emotion is barely stirred.
relaxing all the muscles as it goes. Moving on up the right leg now, to the thigh, into the hip, permeating every cell, every atom, and you're relaxing completely, relaxing completely. The relaxing power is now coming into the fingers of both of your hands. Feel the fingers of both of your hands relaxing. Now your forearms are relaxing. And your upper arms are relaxing. Now feel the relaxing power moving into the base of the spine. And moving slowly up the spine. And into the back of the neck and shoulder muscles. The back of your neck and shoulder muscles are now becoming loose and limp. Loose and limp. Just completely relaxed. And the relaxing power is now moving up the back of the neck and into the scalp. Relaxing the scalp. Feel your scalp relaxing. And now, raining down into the facial muscles. Relaxing your facial muscles. Your jaw is relaxed, and your throat is relaxed. Your entire body is now relaxed all over, in every way. All tension is gone from your body and mind. And I now want you to imagine a golden light coming down from above and entering the top of your head. The light is now filling your body and beginning to manifest around your heart area. Now feel it. Imagine a pure white light emitting from your heart and completely surrounding your body in an aura of a protective white light. See it. See it. And it becomes reality. You are now totally protected by an aura of spiritual white light. And only the higher masters or your own guides will be able to influence you in any way during this hypnotic session. Your body is now relaxed all over in every way. And your mind is relaxed and filled with peace. In the background, you can hear the soothing beat of the metronome, the metronome, the same sleep, sleep. Sleep. I want you to say sleep in your mind with every bit of the metronome. Sleep. 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 As you listen to the sound of my voice and the soothing beat of the metronome, you feel a very pleasant feeling of relaxation coming over your entire body as this feeling of peace and relaxation increases. You will find yourself going deeper and deeper asleep. Each beat takes you deeper, deeper asleep. So relax, so at peace. Deeper and deeper asleep. I am now going to count backwards from seven to one. As I count backwards, I want you to use your imagination to see yourself in a situation going down. See yourself in your mind going down with each. Count. You will go deeper and deeper to sleep. Feel yourself going deeper to the edge. Count. Number seven. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Down, down, down. Number six. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Down, down, down. Number five. Deeper, 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 
down, down, down. Number four, bigger, bigger, bigger. Down, down, down. Number three, bigger, bigger, bigger. Down, down, down. Number two, bigger, bigger, bigger. Down. Down, down, number one, you are now quite deep, and you feel deep, in a moment I am going to take you even deeper, but first I want you to think of the word peace, use your imagination, and create a scene in your mind that is totally peaceful to you, let your body and spirit become part of that scene in your mind, Peace, such a calm and relaxed feeling, such a quietness of spirit. Right now, you are at peace with yourself, with the world, and with everyone in it. I want you to carry this feeling throughout this session and throughout the rest of this day. All right, now you are very deep in this deep hypnotic sleep, but you are going to go even deeper, much, much deeper. Yeah.
Oh, <laughs> 